There is no friend as loyal as a book. Yes, books are our best friend. September 6, National Read a Book Day. This day invites us all to grab a book we might enjoy and spend the day reading. On this special occasion, let's hear to some motivational talks by experts. They will be sharing their ideas on benefits of reading and various reading techniques which will take you to the magical world of reading. Listen to them and be inspired. Yes, let's rekindle the joy of reading. I welcome each and everyone present here. I'd like to welcome Julie Ma'am, uh, HOD and Assistant Professor at Little Fry College, Kuruvayur. And I welcome uh, Sandeep Sir, uh, Assistant Professor at Sri Kerala Vama College, Trishu. Uh, now we can start this discussion on this topic. Start with uh, Julie Ma'am's talk. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Good one and all. Good afternoon, Ma'am. And uh, first of all, I congratulate uh, the principal and the organizing team of uh, Sri Gokulam Public School, who has taken so much of effort to bring in such a wonderful program to uh, enrich the students with the importance of reading on this special occasion. Yes, reading. The importance of reading in a human being's life is inevitable. And in this uh, scenario, let me tell you how reading is going to help each one of us to overcome this pandemic lockdown. Reading has always helped in the development and progress of human nature. Let me also introduce the topic, Rekindling the Joy of Reading. I welcome you to this world of mesmerizing miracle of words. With the definition of Longman Dictionary, let us get into the world of this perception. Perceiving a written text in order to understand its contents is what the dictionary reveals regarding reading. You perceive a text and in order to understand its contents, we think rethink, analyze, and ultimately we bring in multiple meanings regarding the text. It is also being discussed regarding the range of reading. We all are, of course, lovers of books. But at the same time, surveys reveal that Voracious readers read of around 1.8 million words per year. And reluctant readers or the lazy readers read 8,000 words per year. Now, make it a point that from today onwards, let us get into this mesmerizing world of words and create love towards reading. I would also like to introduce a few great writers who have revealed their perceptions regarding the importance of reading. J.K. Rowling, a very famous writer who has opened a magical scenario of Harry Potter, conveyed that I do believe something very magical can happen when you read a good book. And Malala, a very famous and a strong personality, has conveyed that a book, a pen, a child and a teacher can change the world. Neil Gallman has also conveyed that a book is a dream that you hold in your hand. 
So, all these writers have definitely been influenced by the importance of reading. Let's see what are the various genres of writing. Before that, let me also convey the purpose behind the writings of great writers. Without an intention, without a strong motive, a work cannot be written. And we have a few good writers who expressed their attitudes, their expressions, their experiences and their thoughts and ideas and emotions through their works with a strong intention. J.K. Rowling in her works has brought in the strong power of imagination. A.P.J. Abdul Kalam, we all know a very motivating writer has written with the thought of realization. Malala has tried to create a revolution through her writing. For Sylvia Plath, writing was a therapy and for Shakespeare, it was a livelihood. Vaikal Muhammad Bashir found the whole nature of the universe into his writings. So, each and every writing will have a strong intention which is transferred to the reader. And there begins the meaning of writing and of reading. You write what you dream and you become what you write. This is what great writers like Gandhiji, APJ Abdul Kalam, Shakespeare, William Wordsworth, Malala, John Keats, Robert Frost, Kamala Das, Tashidesh Pandey, Shashi Tharoor, R.K. Narayan, Mulkaraj Anand, etc. have tried to convey through their writings. Now let me introduce a few perceptions of writing as well as a, a large door which opens to you to enrich yourselves reading. There are many journals of writing which we can find which are helpful to, to improve our reading skills like the journals and the diaries written by we all know Anne Frank, a young girl of 13 who jotted down everything that came to her mind in a very closed situation, the Nazi rule. It was through her diary, the diary of a young girl, that the experiences of the Jews was really revealed. And you can see different styles of writings as we speak about the importance of reading. I would also like to bring to your notice about the benefits of reading. Reading is definitely creating a lot of changes in a human's life. It improves communication and language skills. It helps us to communicate easily with the use of the language fluently and excellently in some occasions. It increases vocabulary. Definitely, when you read, you improve your vocabulary. You unknowingly collect new words which are registered in your mind and which will definitely reflect in your usage of language through speech as well as through writing. It develops 
skill of comprehension, develops smart thinking ability, it opens new doors of knowledge and develops critical thinking among the readers. It improves the decision-making skill of a person. It increases memory power. This helps us in keeping ourselves away from certain health issues and psychological ailments. It increases the level of concentration. Reading improves the power of imagination. It helps to understand various social and cultural perspectives. Why I say the various social and cultural perspectives? Because we read a lot of books from all over the world which speak about the culture, different societies, different people, different kind of language definitely, different cultural aspects, different economical conditions, political ideologies which vary from each locality, the lifestyle, all these differ from one place to another, from one person to another. Through reading, we can definitely come to know about the varied beauty. The various reading techniques which are found in the process of reading. Scanning is one amongst them. It highlights the most important points of a book, the method through which we just peruse a text, like the telephone book which we have in our hands. Often, we just scan it and we don't go into deep reading. Another kind of reading is skimming to get the gist of the text like newspapers and magazines. The third concept of reading is active reading. Total involvement in the process of reading results in proper understanding of the book. Next kind of reading scale is speed reading. Speed reading is helping us to increase the speed of the reader. It increases the reading skill of a person. So these techniques will definitely help us to understand the various styles of reading a text. Now I would also create give you the information about how to read more. Sometimes we are quite lazy to read, but reading will definitely create a great change. And if you take up this process seriously, we can definitely improve a lot of qualities within as well as in the society. Now, how to read more? Definitely, if you are intending to read more, you should create determination. Set a daily goal. You should definitely have a goal that you will, you will read. Fix a time. Fix the number of pages that you want to read and fix a speed. Avoid distractions. Give focus on what you read. Develop concentration. Find a quiet place and avoid mobile. Avoid definitely social media. Next few thoughts to make yourself a better reader is you should enjoy the process of reading. Create a comfortable surrounding. Go in for easy reading. Select books of your choice. And finally, read everywhere. 
Read all that comes to your hand. Create a social contact through reading. Update yourself and maximize your reading skills. Avoid distractions. Reading is a journey through the existing, towards the unknown, to experience a new knowledge. As we all know, all the flowers of all the tomorrows are in the seeds of today to reading and trying to accept, train, mold ourselves into the world of reading, definitely these ideas and these visions will help you out to become better readers. I wish all of you better reading days ahead. I welcome uh, Sri Sandeep sir for talk about today's topic, Rekindling the Joy of Reading. I very much liked the title of the topic that is Rekindling the Joy of Reading because it presupposes two fundamental ideas. One is joy and the second one is rekindling. We all know that reading is something which brings joy. It's a sort of joyous, pleasurable journey into certain ideas, certain notions, certain image, images, and certain imaginary worlds as well. So there is that joy element on one side. And on the other, you have brilliantly used the term rekindling because the fire is now almost uh, extinguished. We have to rekindle it in this younger generation. That is why I said it is a very meaningful term that you have used. So keeping this idea in mind, let me proceed to my topic. Today, I propose to speak about the art of reading. So you may ask the question, uh, why should it be considered as an art? If you are, have to read something, you should simply take a book and read. Why should it be considered as an art? Should it be called as an art after all? I would call it an art because like an art, it has various constituents. It has got its own method, its own methodology, which I would uh, definitely detail as, the, as this topic progresses. So before entering into the topic, let me tell you something else. We all live in a digital age or rather digitalized age. We have uh, got no option rather than tying ourselves with this sort of networks in one way or the other. And this young generation is always accused of being digital citizens or netizens, we call you. And there is this kind of accusation happening that the young adults are always addicted to digital technologies. This term is very problematic as well, addicted to. Because addiction is always a kind, it always carries a kind of negative connotation with it. So I would like to bring in a slight modification, a change in that usage. I would call you people are exposed to digital technologies. So in that fashion, it is not your fault at all that you live in this world of digital devices whether it be mobile phones or laptops or uh, you use various other gadgets like that. So you are free of that burden. I set you free. There is no sort of accusation at all because you are using all these gadgets because you are nothing but the products of the current culture in which we all live. And how this reading becomes important in the contemporary context. Now there is another problem happening in the pandemic era because uh, you don't have access to the real books, rather you are supposed to read e-books. Again, you become a slave of digital technologies and uh, scientific theories have proven that 
e reading is comparatively having lesser impact compared to the real reading of books now i will tell you uh, the certain do's and don'ts of reading so i have divided uh, my question regarding reading into four different segments the why of reading the when of reading the what of reading and the how of reading okay these four questions are very significant when we consider reading as an art i'm having a kind of scientific examination into this act of reading so first comes the question why of reading why should we read after all if anything will befall upon me if i don't read any of these texts is one of those questions one should uh, one may ask oneself so this why of reading brings into play the ideas look like knowledge and information you may uh, ask uh, whether knowledge uh, could be acquired through various other sources like uh, by looking into uh, mobiles or searching through internet and all sorts of things but when you read a book and the knowledge that you acquire from that book is quite different from the knowledge that you acquire through other digital devices because as i said earlier a book is a bit more intimate in its impact factor okay when you read a book you register those ideas a bit more sharply a bit more deeply when compared to a digital device there should not be any one or anything to disturb your calm composed atmosphere you can read and enjoy a book only when the internal and external environment is so free so calm now comes one of those fundamental question that is the what of reading what should i read it's a very interesting at the same time an intriguing question what should i read so it depends upon your taste your inclinations your impressions your proclivities your affinities if you are interested in food fiction if you are so addicted to food you can read something like a food fiction so you have got innumerable options so if you are a person who likes travel and adventure you can write uh, or sorry you can read travel uh, literature travelogues and all sort of things so you have got innumerable variety infinite variety in front of you you can pick and choose from any of these sort of uh, categories and genres and if you are a uh, poet yourself if you like to write poems or read poems you can enter into this uh, vast mesmerizing world of poems as well so this sort of variety is in front of you and it is uh, unfortunate that you people are not looking and searching for this blisses in front of you let me now progress into the fourth uh, domain of reading that is the how aspect okay how to read something that is where this title becomes significant the art of reading becomes significant so the first aspect is that the first theory is that if you have been started reading as a habit if you have been cultivated it as a habit then you should start with a good book not a bad one because if you start your reading activity with a bad book it will have a long lasting impression upon you and you will always keep yourself away from this activity of reading or if you don't have enough time after your studies after your all those digital classes and all these things and your home assignments then you could think about uh, listening to audio books that's a wonderful option in this digital age you could listen to these sort of audio books which will narrate you all the interesting stuff that you otherwise should read yourself the device will read it out to you so you could use that uh, brilliant technology at your disposal okay. you you can listen to whenever you are to those uh, novels or short stories or whatever you want to listen the device will narrate it to you through this audio uh, devices now another significant aspect as far as reading is concerned is you should be an 
intelligent reader. Okay, now how to read intelligently? Please do remember the first point where I asked you to select a good book rather than a bad book. So in that way, you became an intelligent chooser. Now I ask you to become an intelligent reader. Okay, so how to read intelligently? You may skip through certain portions if you want initially. Okay, initially, if you find that certain portions are not as uh, attractive you didn't like that portion at all, you may skip through and read whatever that fascinates you, that captures your attention, your interest or whatever. Okay, so in that fashion, you should become an intelligent reader. Okay, you select. Second thing, by intelligent reader, I also mean you should read diligently as well as meticulously. You shall not skip any idea, any concept, any image which fascinates you. Okay. The third thing is that you should, no, it's the fourth thing, I would say. So the fourth thing is that you should make a book your best friend. Okay. Make your book your best friend. Similarly, you also could have a friend who also is a lover of a book. These two things are complementary. Okay, suppose uh, you have a very close friend who also wants to read a book. You also are trying to read the same book. After completing, after fixing a date of completion, after completing that particular work, you could share your ideas, your thoughts, your impressions on that work. That is one way of making your reading interesting. It's a kind of challenge you give to each other, a mutual challenge. Okay, I will complete reading uh, Harry Potter by the end of August 30th. Okay, and uh, your friend also says the same thing. So in that way, you fix a date uh, with your companion and both of you read the same book. Or you have got the second option where both of you read two different books and you share the ideas and exchange these two books. Or if you have a kind of larger gathering, like a book club or the sort, then there is larger extensive exchange of these ideas. So all these things do happen. Now, another method through which uh, you could compel yourself into reading is that you prepare a chart on your room in which you record all the books that you wish to read. And on the other side, you have a calendar as well. And uh, fix a time for completing a specific book in that list. So for example, there is a book with uh, 300 pages. You can have a much more elaborate time. And if it is a shorter one, you can uh, finish it with a shorter time period. And another method along with this kind of reading is that uh, uh, it's a kind of challenge you pose upon yourself. That is, uh, a book a month challenge. I used to do that uh, myself, a book a month challenge, by which if I am taking a book from the college library, I will finish it within a month and hand it over by the end of that month or by the completion of uh, 30 days. Okay, so this is the kind of challenge that we give to ourselves. So if you have a company of uh, so many other uh, students along with you, then it would be a wonderful, interesting kind of a challenge, a book a month challenge. So these are some of the fundamental ideas that uh, I would like to share to you regarding the art of reading. So I think uh, I haven't uh, bored you in any way. I am uh, just giving you certain primary impressions uh, that I have found as far as reading is concerned, being a reader myself. Uh, in my college as well, I push my students as well uh, to reading, uh, even though they too are slaves of this uh, digital age. So I hope uh, this kind of ideas uh, were helpful to you. And by the end of one month, I will definitely call Remya and ask your progress in reading. For the time being, uh, I think uh, this would be enough for today. So I conclude by saying that reading is a very, very significant act 
as far as human progress in civilization is concerned so please do take it uh, seriously as a very important cultural act even julie must discuss some points that uh, when we read books it will develop our level of imagination and it will also broaden our uh, horizons of pers uh, perspectives and all and it will sure. enrich our vocabulary so surely take, take up all these uh, points and we really thank uh, julie ma'am and sandeep sir for being part of our panel discussion your presence has been a motivation for us and also students so once again i thank Uh, Sandeep sir and Julie ma'am uh, on behalf of English department and on behalf of our school Sri Gogulam Public School Guruvayur thank you okay okay thank you okay thank you sir thank you children don't keep it yourself share the experience read aloud read to your friends family pets and plants wishing you a better reading days ahead thank you